Hi guys, well into season 9 now, with just 3 games left. For the past 2 weeks, we've been playing Ordine, released by Namco in 1988. This game is a cute em up, and whilst it plays perfectly reasonably, there's something about it that meant I didn't love it. Part of it is the nature of the power ups, which you only have for a period of time, having purchased them in the shops that appear periodically through the levels. This means that much of the time, you have the basic weapons, which are alright, but levels 3 and 4 ramp up the difficulty significantly, which meant as I got better, I was actually enjoying the game less. Regarding home versions, the game only saw a port to the PC Engine. I was going to do a separate video on it, maybe I'll try to do one soon. But the game is really a good port. It loses out on some of the nice effects of the arcade, but the core gameplay is there. Pretty impressive for a home system. So this is the second shmup in a row, and I'd argue the inferior one compared to Nebulous Ray that we had last time. Let's see how everyone did now with the scores. As we're getting deeper into the season, it's our core of players returning each week. I received 12 scores from our regulars, all of which have played every game this season, except Blue Yak who missed March and Maze. The scores were pretty tight, especially from my retro tech in 11th with 127,000, through to Colin in 5th with 143,000. Beyond Colin, it's me in 4th with 163,000, Mark takes the bronze medal with 173,000, and then our top two could barely be separated for over a week. Finishing just a thousand points ahead of Graham, our winner of Ordine is our shmup specialist, Big Jaffa. Great effort from both of these guys, and there was next to nothing in it. But I'm back in Blighty, the graphs are returned. Here is the distribution of the scores, and we can see just five bins being occupied. In the middle, we have a group of five people, all in the same bin, which I think is dying early on level four. There is then a gap up to myself and Mark, and then in the next bin, it's Graham and Juff. Our top four separated themselves from the pack, and our top two were equally deserving of the win this time. Next up is the difficulty curve. We see a big plateau in the middle, showing that there is definitely a bit of a wall here, around the level three boss and the start of level four. Beyond that, it eases up through to the end of level four, and our top three all died on what I hear is a very tricky level five. Finally, the progress over the two weeks. Here we can see how everyone has converged on a narrow range of scores at the top, compared to the wider range overall. At the top, it was Juff who set the early benchmark. Graham then took the lead by a tiny margin, before with a day to go, Juff regained the lead, but only pushed his score on by a couple of thousand from where he was earlier in the week. It was similar between myself and Mark, me getting ahead with a few days to go and then Mark getting ahead in the last day. Also Retro Arcade Challenge, jumping up into the 140,000 points club with just a day to go. So being two thirds into the season, let's check out the league table. Positions are broadly the same. It is close between my Retro Tech and Bob for 6th and 7th. Mark has got ahead of Robert for 4th, but they are still close. Up at the top, with that win, Juff has snuck ahead of me for second, and I'm now 35 points behind our leader Graham. With three games left, is very much all to play for. Let's now see what our next game is. Another shmup, and Juff has to be the favourite. A puzzle, and I'd fancy my chances. Or an arcade classic, and Graham is likely difficult to beat. I've had 13 games sent to me, beginning with the letter P. There's been surprisingly little duplication of submissions. The only game to get multiple was Palamedes, with two votes. That's a puzzle game, a genre that got good representation this time, with Poyo Poyo, Pipe Dream, and Puzzle Ball submitted too. We have two shmups, Prehistoric Isle from Paul, and one from Juff, but as the winner of Ordine, his selection of pro gear is trebled. So let's set things going, and see what we get. Okay, it's slowing down. Looks like it's not going to be pro gear. Oh, cool. So this is choice in my retro tech and it's Puzzle Bubble. So when we were doing games kind of by year before, Puzzle Bubble was particularly popular um, for that year. A puzzle game, pretty notable for most people, I think. You know, fire bubbles up towards the uh, screen to clear, this, clear the level and move on to the next one. 
So yeah, good choice. I'll go make a video and be back in a sec. So our seventh game of the season is Puzzle Bobble, released in 1994 by Taito. The game originally came out on the Taito B system hardware, but came well known as a Neo Geo game, which will be the version we'll be playing. The game doesn't need much introduction, as it's extremely well known with numerous home ports and clones. The aim of the game is to clear each screen by firing round bubbles, match three and they disappear. Once there are none left, then you move on to the next stage. We'll be using the Neo Geo version, which is pbobblen.zip. And unlike Twin Galaxies, we will use the default level 4 difficulty. For next time, please send me a game beginning with the letter Q. There's not a lot to choose from. We've already had Kicks and Qbert. I'll probably be going for Quarth, which is a puzzle shmup hybrid that looks interesting to me. So I hope you all enjoy playing some Puzzle Bobble. I certainly will. And I'll be back in a couple of weeks with the scores. See you then. Yeah.